John Chen. I'm an ophthalmologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And I'm an associate professor for the departments of uh, ophthalmology and neurology. And I'm Dr. Kevin Chodnicki, a resident physician in the Department of Ophthalmology, also here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. We're going to be discussing our article, Stroke Risk Before and After Central Retinal Artery Occlusion in a U.S. Cohort, that will be appearing in, in this upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our studies show that there's a significant increased risk of stroke around the time of a central retinal artery occlusion, which highlights the importance of treating a central retinal artery occlusion as a stroke equivalent and working these patients up with the same urgency as an acute stroke. In particular, it is prudent to assume a central retinal artery occlusion is an embolic stroke syndrome until proven otherwise. Along with our collaborators, Dr. Jose Polito in ophthalmology, Dr. James Kloss in neurology, and Mr. Dave Hodge, who provided statistical analysis, we demonstrated in the, new, in the 300 new central retina artery occlusion patients seen at Mayo Clinic sites from 2001 to 2016 that 5.3% had a symptomatic ischemic stroke within two weeks of the central retinal artery occlusion, including 1.3% who had an ischemic stroke the same day as a central retinal artery occlusion. Of the patients whose central retinal artery occlusion was determined to be embolic, 7% of these patients had a stroke around the time of the central retinal artery occlusion, compared with 1.3% of patients with an undetermined cause of the central retinal artery occlusion. 110 patients had an MRI within two weeks of their central retinal artery occlusion, and 10 of these patients had asymptomatic diffusion restriction. Said another way, these patients had an ischemic stroke just in a fortunate territory. Overall, 22.7% of patients had evidence of an acute stroke on MRI, with about half of them being asymptomatic. Our findings confirm that there is a large risk of stroke around the time of a central retinal artery occlusion, and therefore these patients need to be worked up emergently. In the past, an acute central retinal artery occlusion would, be, would have an embolic workup as an outpatient that may take up to a month to complete. This delayed workup could put a patient at risk for devastating stroke. Our study contributed to a change in the triage system between the Mayo Clinic Departments of Ophthalmology and Neurology, where retinal artery occlusions are now evaluated with the same urgency as a CNS stroke. We would like all providers to recognize the value of a cardio and cerebrovascular workup, with particular attention on ruling out embolic phenomenon, as these patients are at the highest acute stroke risk. These patients need an evaluation of the carotid arteries with either a carotid ultrasound, a CTA, or an MRA, and also a cardiac evaluation, prefer preferentially a TEE or ultra monitor. We often typically get an MRI to determine the potential risk stroke burden in these patients. For patients, we really want them to recognize the serious nature of acute vision loss and to present for evaluation. There are several reasons other than a central retinal artery occlusion for acute vision loss, so they need to be seen to determine the cause so they can be properly managed. It is also important for patients to recognize that eye problems don't exist in a vacuum, and they can also be a harbinger of systemic problems. And of course, if they have symptoms of a stroke, they need to present as quickly as they can to an emergency room. We're currently working on the next phase of this project, which will be a population-based analysis of stroke risk around the time of a central retinal artery occlusion using the Rochester Epidemiology Project database. We recognize the potential for referral bias at the institution-based study at Mayo Clinic and look forward to presenting population-based data around this issue in the near future, um, but we think that this will truly emphasize the risk of stroke and that these are embolic phenomena until proven otherwise. Thank you all, and we hope you enjoy reading the article. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.